How's it going, everyone? Session here. Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV. We have the 6.4 notes completed just under the time period in which maintenance is currently undergoing. Let's take a look and see exactly what we've got going on for the notes that we'll be seeing taken to fruition in the next couple of hours. Okay, we got the trailer for 6.4, already goaded, looks crazy. Go check that out if you haven't already. Okay, moving on, we got some, let's see, some maintenance requests, okay. I love that. Always got to say yes to the, the new quest line for that storyline. I'm already expecting it to be, like, insane. Uh, character portraits have been implemented for battle dialogue during the main scenario. Instance quest battles during patch 2.0 from Brotherly Love through the final quest of 255. That's really cool. I actually love that they're implementing uh, a lot of the stuff that they took in for Endwalker and even Shadowbringers and just re, you know, retouching older expansions as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, we got the new raids coming out, the new storyline for that, that's going to be cool. Tataro's Grand Adventure, that's coming out. We touched on that a little bit. Uh, Island Sanctuary, I saw that just now. Where'd that go? Did I miss that real quickly? Oh, there it goes, okay. New quest line. Okay, so I think this is the, um, I believe the Island Sanctuary got extended to rank 16 from 12. So I think this is the quest you get for basically completing the Sanctuary, which is cool. We got new chapters added for new game plus, which is cool. And they do the for pandemonium. The graphics for the quest icon that displays above escort NPCs has been changed for certain quests. Oh, so now you can tell that the quest is gonna have an escort. I guess it means that they're gonna follow you around. Um, and I think that's like a hint as to that being the case. I don't know why they added that, but I think it's cool to at least know that that's going to be the case. What they should have, I mean, maybe we'll read on to it, but I hope they do that for a lot of other quest lines as well, where they essentially create one that's like a film looking thing so that it'll tell you like, hey, like there's going to be a cutscene afterwards. Because, you know, they give you the heads up when you click into the quest, but it'd be cool to have that even beforehand, just so you can kind of be more prepared for it in that case scenario. So that's still really cool that they're starting to add this. Um, and I'm sure we'll start to see this more along with a lot of other future quest lines that are not necessarily part of the MSQ but they will at least be used for a lot of other scenarios as well which is cool we got new items available for gemstone traders new rewards for the maps that's cool grand company new stuff cool following additions have been adjustments to these to hard voyages okay new maps new areas new items they increase the submersible rank to 110 from 105 the maximum number of items that can be displayed in the voyage window and went to 30 from 10. cool and then that's like items and acquire total numbers have are not displayed. Cool. Okay. The message that displays when confirming the results of a housing lottery in which only one person has participated has been changed. Okay. The following additions and additions have been made to the message books. The home world of players who leave a message will be displayed. A unique mark will be displayed on messages written by players who belong to the same free company as you. Cool. Got new furnishing for the design contest. Shout out to the people who come up with the genius designs for all this stuff, which is cool. Um, new furnishings again. I love that. That's cool. New aquatic uh, aquarium fish, new equestrian rolls, new sea for flower pots, cool, all that fun stuff. Uh, new cards and new opponents, which will try out for cold saucer, cool. <laughs> um, ooh, following additions have been made to the island sanctuary. So yeah, the rank, yeah, it went to sixteen. There's new visions, new items that have been added are offered by the horrendous hoarder. Okay, so new stuff, new gathering area, ooh. Okay, there's new. There's another area to explore. The island is getting larger. That is cool. Um, new gathering points, new gathering materials, new construction plots are available, available to the highway. New facilities, new crafting recipes, and new produce. Those look like beets. New animals. I saw this actually. It looked pretty cool. Uh, new material can be acquired from foraging expeditions. New area has been unlocked. New isle handiwork. Iowa handicrafts have been added. A warning display when a material is deficient in, uh, will be incurred for handicrafts that have been added. I actually like that a lot. Um, it'll let you know that essentially if um, you start kind of preparing, because you know you can prepare the sanctuary a week for the whole entire week. So if you basically don't have enough materials after you add everything, um, usually it doesn't add it. It doesn't give you the error message until it starts the craft. So you don't know if you're not you know managing your inventory or like looking at it. But now it will do that. That's really cool. Uh, minions increased from 40 to 50. That's cool. Furnishing glamours are going to be implemented too, which we saw at the live stream, which is awesome. They have that as a new option. Furnishing glamour limits can be uh, 90. 
You can also dye the stuff and you can register it. That's also cool. New hairstyle option that they added for Viera. Um, that is one of the uh, original outfits I think that they had for the game for a while. And I think this one as well. So it's cool that they added those styles. Uh, new styles for Rockgar. <laughs> I like how they added the um, the Rockgar with the long hair. The Great Lengths one, he's basically set for Rockgar. Hey, I'll take it. That's cool though. I'm probably not going to make a Rothgar character, but I feel like I'll definitely see that hairstyle very frequently now that it's uh, going to be implemented for the new update. Uh, new additions have been made to Wonders Tales. Prize available for, oh, exchange for gold, silver, and bronze certificates have been adjusted, and they also added the uh, new content. Cool. For the Foley's, there's a new mount. We saw that a little bit. They also changed it for Zervin, which we'll see in a little bit, and there's a new emote. Okay. The battle system. Let's see what they did here. The traits are listed for level 90, so we'll keep that in mind. For the Paladin, Riot Blade, potency increased from 120 to 140, and the combo potency went from 280 to 300. Okay, a little, little buff right there. Circle of Scorn, potency went to 120 from 100. That's pretty nice, actually. Divine Field effect radius went from 15 to 30. Oh, so essentially there was a moment during the stream where they basically said that they're going to take a lot of effects and kind of modify them so that the radius is double the length, the, um, the distance in which it covers. And they're going to change the effect and how it visually looks so that the whole screen isn't covered with like an effect. So the vine veil right now, you know, you raise your shield and then it's like a giant circle that expands and covering 15 yalms isn't really a lot, which is nice, but um, they're probably going to change how that visually looks now just because uh, the range for it is going to be a lot wider. So, you know, just to kind of like reduce the amount of, uh, you know, screen coverage, they'll probably make it be like a personal effect on the person versus it being like a huge wide effect on top of this, uh, of the whole party. And a lot of classes have that also applied. So hopefully that'll kind of take into effect and we'll see what that looks like when we uh, get our hands on the game in a few hours. They also increase the potency for Royal Authority from 380 to 400, which is cool. Now, this is the big one. Atonement potency increased to 400 from 380 as well. So the damage is still the same for Royal Authority versus Atonement, but the execution no longer interrupts action combos. So right now, if um, if you do Fast Blade into Riot Blade and then you do Atonement, you will break that combo. Uh, usually, you kind of have to do all the Atonements back to back with each other. You can use Holy Spirit in between, but now you can essentially do you know i can do fast blade into atonement into riot blade into atonement and that should be fine it won't break the actual uh combo which is going to be pretty nice because it's going to increase a little bit of the potency that can come out of paladin during the kind of the burst window prep so that'd be really cool um i'm also pretty sure that the potion window for that also will change just a little bit since you know you have 30 seconds to kind of figure it out um so I'm sure that the Paladins will be very excited to be seeing this effect come into place. So that's honestly a huge win. Uh, so I love that. Okay, next we have ourselves Warrior Changes. Quite a bit of it as well. So the potency combo for Storm's Path went from three, or sorry, 430 to 440. Okay, and the normal potency went to 160 from 150. Cool. For Vengeance, that's the 30% the sensor. The vulnerability downstairs effect has been combined with the Vengeance status effect. Oh, I see. So now, because um, when you got when you activate Vengeance, um, the ability appears and it's vulnerable down. I think they're technically separated, but it, they equate to 30%. So I guess now that you kind of just combine them together. So I think that's just kind of like a visual like rework, if you will. It's not necessarily going to be like a nerf or a buff. It's just, you know, to kind of clean up the HUD um, with your buff listing. Vengeance now only has one icon versus two, which is cool. Storm's Eye, also potency went to 440 to kind of match Storm's Path. Makes sense. Uh, Felcleave went to 520. I feel like it used to be 520 at some point in time. So going to 520 from 490 is pretty nice. Warrior should be doing some pretty good damage at this point right now. Uh, Upheaval went to 400 from 370. That's cool. So Shake It Off also is one of those buffs that the, uh, the range has doubled to 30 ohms. I think that almost covers the entire... Um, the entire arena and it covers small arenas so that's interesting so yeah we should be seeing the same thing kind of come into effect where the the effect visual for shake it off to change so we'll see that and the inner chaos went from 650 to 660 
okay, a little minor up there. So I think all in all, though, the um, the actual buff for Warrior is pretty, pretty big uh, for all things considered. So I think Warriors are also going to be rejoicing seeing all this come into place. So that's cool. Uh, for Dark Knight, they only added the visual uh, effect radius for Dark Missionary to go to 30 ohms from 15. So I guess Dark Knight right now is in a perfectly comfortable place. Uh, although I'm sure that they may have been expecting to there to be some kind of buff, but uh, I don't think so, though. I think but uh, Dark Knight is in a very good spot right now as a tank, so that's good. And then for Gunbreaker, uh, they increased just Keen Edge and Brutal Shell. So the first two hits of the combo uh, went from 170 to 200, which is cool. And then Brutal Shell went from 130 to 160, but the combo potency went from 270 to 300. That's cool. And the Heart of Light also is a 30 ohm uh, effect radius in terms of the activation for that. So that's cool. For Pugilist slash Monk, <laughs> both Mantra and Brotherhood went to 30 ohms as well. So that's obviously the trend we're starting to see right now, you know. Um, they're both just now officially like a full screen, you know, full map arena buff, if you will, for for that, which is going to make it a lot easier to use these skills and not having people like miss out on those. So that'd be cool. I feel like this might also give the hint to the possibility that the raid maps or stages for this tier might be a bit larger that if you don't have this radius, it might be a little tough to actually have it kind of combined for the burst damage, but we'll see how that kind of plays into effect once we actually start to get into the, uh, the raids later on tomorrow. Uh, for Dragoon, the jump can now be executed while bound which is cool because it's actually kind of crazy that that doesn't actually work. Although that is, that used to be kind of like a, um, like a weird caveat in some case scenarios, but now it, it kind of works. And then uh, high jump also has the same effect. So to improve functionality of the action, jump will no longer affect the character's position as it's recognized by the server. So the camera will no longer follow your character when executing jump. Oh, the camera will no longer follow your character when executing jump. Hmm. So if you don't know, um, if you're away from the opponent, let's say that the target is kind of, you know, a while, a bit away, when you jump, your camera actually follows the jump, but it keeps your position in place. And now it no longer does that. So I wonder how that's going to actually play out in terms of its affectation. I don't actually know. Uh, battle litany effect increase from 15 to 30. Another one, because again, it's a, you know, stance, the staff goes up and then it covers the entire top side with like a, like a, you know, a light, but now it no longer, it's going to be a different effect. I'm sure dragon sight. Now that's an interesting one. It nullifies the action direction requirements for the self. So what that means is that you basically have a true North, the entire duration for when you're activating dragon sight. So that is a fascinating buff. Um, that's going to be very, very nice for. Uh, Dragoons to be able to take advantage of, especially in scenarios where they activate it. Um, it'll just kind of let them easily handle burst damage without necessarily worrying too much about positionals. So that's kind of cool. Okay, there's Dragoon. On to Samurai. Whew. Okay, let's see. Tank and Goken, that's the AoE. The effect radius increased to 8 Yelms from 5. Okay. Uh, Sene went from 800 to 860. That's a nice buff. Uh, Keishi Goken, that's the uh, Subamagishi version of it, also increased to 8 Yalms. Uh, Shoha, which is the single target OGCD with the meditation, went to 560 for 520. Okay, a little bump. And then Ogi and Keishi and Makiri, both of them went to 860 from 800. Okay, got that, um, got a bit of that buff right there. Reaper, Arcane Circle, the buff, went to 30 Yalms for 15. Cool. Peloton. Effect radius went from 20 to 30 ohms. So that's just for all fist range. So that mean that so that just generally includes Bard, Dancer, and Machinist. So that's cool. Um Bard. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so Mage's Ballad, Army's Peon, and Wanderer's Minuet. The range of additional uh, effect granting that buff and the party members for the self increase from 30 to 50 ohms. So it just permanently is applied to the entire team because I don't think any arena actually goes as big as beyond 50 yams. I believe that is the correct scenario. So I guess now as a result, it's kind of impossible to not be buffed by the bard during this scenario. So that's interesting. Battle voice went to 30 yams from 20, as well as Troubadour Nature's Min and Radiant Finale. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if Bard was actually suffering in the past tier because of the radius coverage of 30 Yalms. I actually don't think so, though, but I don't actually know. Uh, I didn't play Bard this tier, so I don't actually recall. I played it in the first tier, 
and it wasn't too much of an issue as far as I was aware, but I don't, I don't know. We'll see how that plays out, honestly. I'm hoping that Bard actually is cracked for this upcoming tier. Machinist Tactician with 30 Elms, cool. Um, oh, wow. So Shield Samba with 30 Elms, and then also just technical step in general for all four step finishes. The range of step bonus effect granting technical finish and e-spirit to the self and party members increased to 30 yams from 15. So applying technical finish increased 30 yams. And then that means that every, okay. I see. Interesting. So now, yeah, it's easy to activate technical, which makes sense though, because it's, it's a buff. So that's cool. Black Mage, Xenoglossy increased to 880 from 800 potency. That's a nice little bump. But the magic damage increased from 21 to 23%, which is actually kind of a kick. So that's going to be pretty nice for Black Mage. They should be thriving pretty well with this buff. Summoner, Searing Light, effect rate went to uh, 30 from 15, standard. Um, Red Mage, Embolden increased to 30 elms, and so did Magic Barrier. Interesting. So I think the general consensus is that Red Mage was actually a DPS that was underperforming, I think, in comparison to a lot of the other DPS uh, from the previous tier. Now, I don't necessarily think that Red Mage was in like the worst position, but I think people wanted to be in a better position because despite it having skills like Vercure, Verraise, and Magic Barrier, um, that shouldn't really be indicative of it being taxed for its DPS output because Red Mage is still a pretty tough class to play and its DPS output it just has really good burst opportunities, so it should do good damage. But I think because of the way how the tier worked out uh, with Abyssos, it was actually pretty easy for every other job to thrive in DPS output. And Red Mage was one job that should have thrived from it, but it actually didn't. So them not buffing any of the damage for Red Mage, I wonder how that's going to play into the new tier. Because I, I plan on playing Red Mage uh, for the final tier. And I wasn't expecting anything outside of just whatever they were going to apply, but I think people generally thought that Red Mage was going to be buffed in some way, shape, and form. So there's a chance that Red Mage may be at the bottom a little bit. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's too early to tell, of course. Okay. For a uh, White Mage, Asylum, that's a bubble, went to 15, yield from 10. Cool. The potency went to 65, and so did the damage over time potency as well interesting and then temperance the range of effects reducing damage taken by the self and party members has increased to 50 from 30 yams okay so they both they both white mage i think isn't white mage already like thriving a damage in terms of the healer output i don't actually know but i know people right now are loving white mage so that's cool valor uh all stuff has increased by yams i <laughs> see so fey illumination deployment tactics that's actually a fascinating one um that they even did that because the the yom uh for deployment is actually a little bit on the low side i, I mean because it's like a technical skill to use but now they've increased that so that's going to make it a lot easier for people to do uh crit low spread seraphic illumination constellation and expedient almost 30 yams and then sacred soil bubble went to 15 from 10. okay astrologian Mm, the effect radius from divination went from 15 to 30. Makes sense. Collective unconscious. Uh, the range of additional effect producing damage taken by 10% has been increased from 8 to 30 yams. The additional effect that reduces damage taken now has a 5 second duration. Huh. Interesting. So, collective is is bound bubble now it too will be a 30 yom thing i wonder how that's gonna look like though i mean eight yoms is small and usually you just use it as like an activation so it's it's gonna be a lot easier now to apply that buff prior to getting hit with like a raid wide which is nice um but i don't expect it to have a 30 yom bubble for that that wouldn't really be I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like, actually. So we'll see. Um, but also the cool thing is that if you hold collective, if you exit and then go back in, it'll reapply the effect, which is really cool. So that's fun. For Sage, Karashal, Physis, uh, Halos, Penheima, and... No, sorry. Uh, 
Kershaw fires his house in Penham at almost 30 on 15. Cool. But Ukrainian Dosis went to 75. Does that compare to the same damage as D? No. Diaz weaker compared to Sage's Ukrainian Dosis. So that's cool. They got rid of Celine. Just going to move on silence for that one. We'll miss you. Even though you're, you know, a glam now. The following actions will not use unique visuals and sound effects when applied to targets. And that's all the abilities that we had mentioned before, pretty much, that were um that do the kind of reduction so you got scholar skills you got um sage or sorry you got a uh, red mage you have yourself summoner and you've got um bard machinist and then peloton for all the fizz range so let's see limit breaks have been adjusted to reduce variance in their damage dealt which is cool that's going to definitely be a lot easier to uh optimize when to do limit breaks so that'll be fascinating to see how that gets fixated around with um the patch Glam is going to be applied to the Scholar Fairy, which is, uh, you know, an unattainable change. So now you can just do an uh, Eggy Glamour, Pet Glamour, to change it to be, what, Eos, Selene, and Carbuncle, which is going to be cool. Uh, I'm probably going to stick with Selene, most likely, but here we are. Pets that are moving will now stop immediately to execute actions when commanded. That's actually a huge one, because a lot of times when you're playing as Summoner and or Scholar, that ends up really delaying a lot of things that kind of go into place. Now, I think that's still going to be a bit tough if you're trying to summon or use the ability from a distance, but I think it should still make it a bit easier to apply just in general. So that'll be a really big win for the for the pets. So it's cool. Text-based filler has been added to the Blue Magic Spellbook. Cool. Uh, adjustments in addition to have been made to the Blue Magic Log, which is cool. We saw this before in the preliminary as well. So that's nice. Uh, the locations of enemies have been adjusted in the following areas. Lower Lenosha, Amare, and Garlemald. Okay, I'll take it. New dungeon, Ether has been added. The minimum required, I think, is going to be 605, which would be cool. Four players, of course. Ah, and then it, it sinks to the 630, which is the case for Felcor and for Lapis Manalis, which is cool. Of course, Voicat Diaz, uh, we have ourselves Golbez, the trial. It's going to be sick. The extreme version of him as well. It should be pretty cracked to watch. Um, so I mean, I mean, I know for sure that a lot of people are going to try and get their hands on this trial and see how it plays out. We saw like a tiny little bit of a teaser of it during the live letter, which is cool. But of course, how that plays out later on will be kind of subjected to how the raid goes out. So that's going to be cool. Um, we have ourselves in a real trial. We got Zervin, of course, very fun, very fun trial. Totally worth a play. Definitely going to be interesting to see if people are able to actually execute the skip. There is a skip mechanic that you can do if you do the right DPS for it. Um, I do expect that to become kind of a, a major ordeal in the requirements for doing this trial. But either way, the trial should still be a ton of fun. So we'll see. Of course, the uh, drop rate for the wind flu has been increased for the Barbaritia trial mount. So that's cool. We have ourselves the new Anabasius raid has been added. So I'm pretty sure everyone has confirmed that this is P9. So we'll see how this boss plays out. They also showcase this boss also at the live letter. And the arena for this place is huge. So that's going to be fascinating. And of course, in conjunction with everything that's going on for the change that they're making for the Yalm duration and the uh, Yalm extension. So that should play into a lot of it for this too. Um, so we'll see. Additionally, I think we also got a hint of P10 as well. And in P10, the boss is pretty big. It kind of reminds me of like an abomination, um, like a, like an alien mutant abomination from actually from Brave Exvius. But um, essentially, I think the arena will be large and the boss's hitbox will also be large. Kind of like if you've done P7 or P... Uh, oh, what was it during uh, the first tier? Was it only P7? I guess it was actually. So yeah, P7. So the, the arena is huge. And the hitbox of the boss is also huge and also like non-directional. So it's going to be, I think, one of those scenarios as well. It looks like it might be. So um, 11 and 12, we have no idea what it looks like. So we'll take a look at that when we get our hands on it for the raids when the patch comes out. Now, the big one that they mentioned, huge discussion. So essentially... Oh, wait a second. Sorry, I skipped ahead of it, actually. Hold on. So, the rewards. Treasure coffers appear upon completing an uh, pandemonium and abatios will not yield gear, but instead yield tokens that can be traded for gear of your choosing. 
You can only receive one token per circle each week. In the event you are awarded a token from the loot list, you can relinquish your right to vow for all remaining tokens, regardless of whether you select need or greed. Wait, what? Oh, okay, I see. There's no weekly restriction for entering NBCS, which is cool, um, but there is weeklies. Okay, I thought for a second, I like read that too fast, and I thought that they said that there was no weekly restriction on the gear for NBCS, and that would've been kind of crazy, actually. Um, so the acquisition of getting the gear is still, you know, two for the head, hands, and feet, four for the body and the legs, and then one for the accessories. However, for the Savage variation, there's the P10 boss. Boss looks kind of crazy, actually. Um, also, I love the background. The background looks really, really amazing. Um, so for Savage, it's not coming out tomorrow. It comes out next week. So we do have a whole week to basically figure out, you know, we can theorize, we can predict, we can do some theory crafting and figure out what the raid might do sort of thing after we get our hands into the fight. We can totally take it out from there and see what we've got going on. Um, so the requirement, of course, 630, you know, bis of the current tier to be able to go into uh, P9, and then of course, uh, plus five for 10, then plus 10 for 11 and 12. So that makes sense. Um, the 12th circle, the fourth fight is of course a 120 minute boss fight, which usually means it's a two-parter. Maybe there'll be a door bus or not, we'll see. Now the big change of course is, ooh, Ascension. That's a cool name actually for um, the gear. So 665 will be the new uh, max for the weapon. Of course, all of the Non-weapon pieces will be 660, so that'd be new bis for the entirety of Endwalker expansion, which is cool. Now, there was a mentioned change for the way how they're going to be distributing gear for this tier, and I think that it's based off of feedback, which is really cool. So now, everything will be contained in a single treasure coffer, which is really cool, so that way you're not opening two different chests and getting two different things. Additionally, they're not going to ever be duplicates. So if you do the first fight of P9, it's never going to yield like two necklaces or two rings or two, you know, earrings. It's always going to be one of everything, but the, you know, it'll be chosen three at random, which is really cool. Um, addition to this, the body, the chest piece, which is usually like the most important bis piece, um, and also the hardest to acquire next to the weapon is actually acquirable during the third fight versus the fourth fight. So usually the first fight of the tier gives you only accessories. The second fight will give you the head, head, hands, and feet pieces. Um, the third fight usually gives you the legs and either the head, hands, or feet pieces. But now the third fight will give you the legs and the chest piece. And I'm guessing it'll give you, I think it'll just guarantee give you chest and leg pieces and one head, hands, or feet. I think that's going to be the general basis for it. Um, there might be a chance that it won't drop a chest piece and it will just give you legs head, hands, or feet, but then two of those. Hopefully not, though, but we'll see. Um, and then, of course, that means that the final floor, aka P12, will always guarantee the weapon, mount, the minion, a orchestrion roll, um, and I guess a coffer for that as well. Now, I do wonder, though, if that's going to change how the coffers are going to be appearing in the fourth fight, because usually um, it's a weapon coffer a weapon and a chess piece. So I wonder if it's going to do either one weapon and a and a weapon piece and a weapon coffer and a weapon in general and then there's no chess piece or if it's like two weapons or two coffers. I don't know, but I'm assuming that they're not going to do it like that. I feel like they're going to do one weapon, one coffer and then all the other extra fun goodies. So that'll make the P12 grind, you know, a bit more real, but also a little bit easier only because you're able to get the chess piece through the third fight versus the fourth fight. Uh, additionally, you're uh, not going to be able to receive copies of the Mythos as well as the treasure coffers when replaying a circle prior to the weekly reset. So, like if you clear, you know, if you clear P9 and try and farm P9, you can't technically without just getting practice in. You can't get more than one page, which is pretty standard. So that's cool. Resets, of course, are always at Tuesday. Um, and now the biggest change for this, again, is that not only is the chest acquirable on the third floor versus the fourth floor, um, the weapon will still cost you eight pages from the final fight, which is P12. But now the headpiece will, of course, acquire four for from like P10 for the head, hands, and feet will be four pages. Um, the body piece is six. 
the chest piece or is the chest piece and then the leg piece is six it was usually i believe it was eight at some point but it is going to be for the third um you know the third fight instead of the fourth and additionally you're able to actually trade the fourth pages for the pages that are on the lower side so you know if i complete p12 and i have my weapon for my class that i'm playing i can trade that page to get another page for a previous fight so i can trade in a, a you know a p12 page to get like a p9 page to help me progress getting bits for the other sections that i need for my class now there was a mention i believe of you know them trying to reduce that to make it a little bit easier to acquire so you should be able to essentially spend less time doing raids to just get your gear a little bit faster so instead of again instead of taking eight pages it requires six instead of getting four pages for the accessories you only need three and additionally if you do clear that fourth four, uh, floor then you are able to use that page to help you get this faster so instead of having to wait you know eight weeks to get it guaranteed you can actually do it in a little bit under six depending on the luck that you have with the pages which is really cool so getting this is actually going to be a lot faster if you are able to clear the entire tier which is fun they also added of course to the raid finder the new trials the new raids they removed all of the old trial and old raids to the duty finder now you're able to get echo for mount ordeals and the which is the river Conte trial and the extreme version which is cool they also removed weekly restrictions from coffers for the Alliance raid. So now you can just do that as your heart contents. They also removed the totem restriction for Omega. And they also in, uh, added item sync to 635, which is cool. Now, the elegant tombstones of comedy have been added. So now you can make that the new weekly. They are changing causality to be the new uh, 2000. So they're getting rid of astronomy entirely. Aphorism has been gone for a while. Uh, so now you're going to have causality, astronomy, and oh, sorry comedy causality and poetics so that'd be cool most likely if you're still grinding for the tombstones uh for the mandiver weapons you're going to just be using causality instead of astronomy so that'll just be the new tomes used for getting all that stuff so that is cool now of course we have the duty change for expert now it's lapis and ether font which is good uh, they, of course, increased the item level requirement. They did the same thing for the trial. They also added uh, you proceeding for the alliance raids. They moved the normal roulette for the current uh, raids coming out tomorrow. All that fun stuff. They're changing all the causality and comedies from astronomy and causality, which is cool. Same thing is being applied for PvP and for hunts and for the deep dungeons. If you're going to be doing Orthos, that's going to be helpful. Um, same thing with the maps. They did uh, Stone Ski and Sky for all of the raids the and the trial. Let's see. Following instant dungeons and trials, the positioning of certain NPCs have been adjusted for Siren C. They changed the mechanics for Barnum's Metal. Interesting. That's the, Gorilla is the first boss. Yol is the second boss. Okay. For Doma Castle, the boss battles have been adjusted for all three fights. So that's going to be interesting. Kashima Bania, they changed, they adjusted all the boss fights for that one. And for Alamigo, they did the same thing for those. Interesting. Duty support system has now been added for all of the Stormblood raids that are primary for the main storyline, which is really cool. So that means that they're officially done with doing just the main quest scenario for all of the dungeons for the entire game. So now they're just going to have to clean it up and do it for all of the like additional dungeons, if you will. So you've got a couple that are kind of post- uh msq some of that are you know not directly tied to the storyline but still are dungeons regardless so they'll probably add those down the line but i know for sure they wanted to just add it for the majority of raid um for dungeons that we have throughout the msq progression so now the game is fully single single playable from start to finish if you're doing the dungeons in the game which is cool um variant dungeons we got a new one coming out too which is gonna be really cool you can actually see now the skills that you have with that which is fun um they fixed a couple issues where the uh ultimatum which is the aoe provoke was six seconds but it said 30 they fixed that that's cool um when challenging criterion dungeons uses a variant raise two will also be restored when enemies other than the boss monster appears it's cool interesting that they got that uh they got that added there um they changed the logo actions in eureka we saw that in the preliminary 
Iron Tricking, Criterion Savage, uh, another Silver Citarian Savage. The time remaining until the sewer dweller effect is active can be confirmed to be at the duty list. So you can actually see the, the uh, debuff you get during the second boss, I believe that it is. So that's there's that. Um, oh, we got some PvP changes now. Okay. So, her Paladin. Holy Shelchun. Potency of damage dealt if the barrier is not absorbed and the effect duration expires has been changed from 2,000 plus 50% to 100%. They buffed Paladin. So, basically, if you holy Sheltron and you don't break the barrier, the potency of the barrier the barrier will break and hit targets. So now it does two thousand plus fifty percent of whatever's remaining. So essentially, it does three thousand. Now it does four thousand. That's going to be really helpful. Um, for monk, they uh, ooh enlightenment decreased the potency. From pressure points additional damage from 12 to 8,000, so they nerfed the damage, which is nice. Um, Thunderclap wind resonance effect duration has been increased from five to ten seconds, so they buff the timing in which you have speed. But then, and also the effect duration extension increased from five to ten. Okay, worm wind thrust potency changed from four to 16 to eight to 16, so they increased the minimum. Heaven's thrust damage increased from 10 to 12. Cool, horrid war increased from two to four. Okay. Potency for high jump has decreased from 5 to 4. And then Sky Shatter, potency reduced from 18 to 16. The increased potency two targets out of 32,000 within 5 jumps has not been changed. So the damage for the Sky Shatter LB will do less damage if you're further away from the LB versus being directly underneath it. So that way it kind of allocates because the 18 to 32 doesn't make sense. At least now it's like 50 to 100%. That's cool. Boonshin for Ninja, effect duration reduced from 30 to 20. And then Satan Tenshu, the time required to fill that limit gauge has been increased from 90 to 50, uh, 105 seconds. So it takes longer to use Ninja's LB. Okay. The Samurai Cheetah, ha, oh, they buffed it from three to four seconds. Okay. That's going to be tough because that basically means that they have more time to hit you with this intensity than LB when they want to. So that's fascinating. Uh, for Reaper, the recast time for Soul Slice has been reduced from 2015. That's good. You can use it more frequently. Grimswath, Mask and Sass, the has been reduced from 2 to 1. Okay. So, you don't get two of the combo follow-ups with Grimswath. You only get one. Okay. That's fine. Well, because because uh, you can get a Soul Slice. So, that's what they wanted to try to like compensate for that. So, that makes sense. For Bard, Silent Nocturne. Wow. Potency reduced from 2,000 to 0. So, Silent does no damage now. The range reduced from 25 to 15 yams, and the silence effect duration reduced from 3 to 2 seconds. Well, they, they nerfed that to the ground pretty badly. Okay. Apex error damage increased from 6 to 8,000. Repelling shot increased from 2 to 4,000. Warden's pain, um, grace effect reducing damage taken has been changed from 25%, and the Warden's grace effect increasing HP recovered by healing actions also increased to 25%. So a little bit of an adjustment there. They increased its damage, but they decreased the affectation of silent nocturne. Which is unfortunate, but it, it's it's there. Okay. Bioblaster, potency now doubled while under the effect of analysis. Oh, okay. That's actually kind of nice because right now, if you only use analysis with Bioblaster, it only applies a heavy versus just a dot. So at least now, Bioblaster is more um, potent with analysis, which is cool. Chainsaw, damage potency reduced from 12 to 8,000. Potency now increased by 50% when the target's HP is below 50%. The additional effect. 3% chance to deal damage equal to 95% of the target's HP while under analysis has been changed to potency is increased 50% while under the effect. Oh, so they got rid of the, the chance of chainsaw to one-shot almost people. Um, and instead, they changed it so that the potency now does 50% when it's under 50% for the targets. Interesting. So they nerfed... They kind of reworked Chainsaw because if you were 95% and you got hit with the Chainsaw, that 3% chance it would just one-shot you, they got rid of it entirely. Now it just has a guarantee of increasing its damage from 8 to 12,000 when your health is below 50%. And the chances... Oh, I see. But then if you, um, if you do analysis... Oh, I got it. So if you do analysis chainsaw to a target that is under 50%, it does 16,000 instead versus it having a 3% chance to basically do 
So yeah, they pretty much reworked the chainsaw for PvP so that it just has a higher likelihood of doing more damage to targets that are lower health. But it no longer has a chance to one shot. So that's an interesting change. I, I do miss when it used to just automatically one shot people like at a random chance, but this is also gonna be a welcoming uh, way to keep chainsaw consistent because it was very inconsistent since the chance of 3% was abysmally low um, and it was like a super luck factor. Now it just has a, a you know a functionality of being just more, more mechanically consistent. So I like it. I'm okay with that. Red Mage. The additional effect of bearer potency increased by 10% when target is afflicted with monarchy has been added. Oh. So for Enchanted Repost with Shadow with Double Mon, the barrier potency increased by 10% for each hit when the target is afflicted with uh uh monomaki has been added. So that means that you get a barrier for every time that you do the combo, which is nice though, because it, it kind of lets you stay on the offensive and not really be pressured to run away because you're afraid of getting hit. So that's actually pretty good. That's a very, uh, pretty good buff for Red Mage actually. It's gonna make it be a lot more aggressive, which is cool. Because with Red Mage, you're gonna have to be. For Sage, the for Toxicon 1 and 2, the effect duration has been increased from five to six seconds. That is cool. New PvP actions. Oh, that's why they changed Grim's Plot, uh, the thing from one to two. So now it does guillotine, which is the AOE cone. It delivers an attack of 8,000 potency to all enemies in a cone in front of you, only under the effect of Soul Reaver. So they changed it to be not a single target. It's a guarantee AOE. Because um, when you did Grim's Plot, it would do basically Gallows and Gibbet which each one was 8,000, but now it just does um, guillotine instead of both of those hits. So you're just guaranteed that. And they got rid of give it a gallows. That makes sense actually. So, okay. That makes more sense now. Okay. Reaper is going to be a lot more, like a lot more easier to play doing AOE damage, which is going to be great. So that's cool. Okay. They added some changes for Crystalline Conflict. Season 7 is beginning. New ranking and tier reward will be added for Season 7. Uh, this is where you can pick up all the stuff for the Wolf's Den if you didn't claim their seasonal reward, which is cool. Um, the music for the CC Masters has been reverted to the version used prior to 6.38, which is cool. Um, and the following options for Custom Masters will be toggled on by default. Cool. Okay, now for Frontline, they mentioned this in the preliminary already, but what they basically did was they changed the damage modifier that is damage dealt for warrior and dark knight from zero to negative 10 percent so what that basically means is for warrior and dark knight they do 10 percent less damage period for scholar the damage dealt increased went from negative 10 to zero which means that scholar now does more damage for tank and melee dps modifier for damage taken change from negative 60 to negative 50 which means that they take a little bit less damage than usual for physical range and magic range excluding dancer and red mage and healer the modifier for damage taken went from twenty from thirty to twenty five percent, which means that they take a little bit less damage. But for dancer and red mage, it actually increased from thirty to thirty five, which means that red mage and dancer take more damage, which is dangerous. Uh, the amount of time required to fill the element gauge for dragoon samurai dancer and white mage has been increased by fifteen seconds, and the amount of time to uh, to have bard for the element gauge has decreased by fifteen seconds. So bard is going to be much better in front line than it already kind of was but for dragoon samurai dancer and white mage their ability to activate the lb will be a little bit longer so that'll actually compensate for why the samurai's uh cheat end is actually extended to four seconds if not just for the lb but just for the expectation in general so it's cool the duration of stun heavy bind silence sleep and deep freeze has all been reduced by 25 percent which is a lot because that means that the time for it is going to be very small but because it can stack it's going to be a little bit easier to manage in some case scenarios uh here's a big one the limb stats will no longer be applied to players who are attacked while riding a mount if you get attacked while mounted you will forcibly be dismounted and you get a hoofing it status for five seconds which i do believe is actually a speed buff um I think you have sprint for five seconds during this part or or i forget which one it is actually um there's a very certain scenario where you do get huffing it i just don't remember from where so i forget if it's a slowdown buff or if it is a speed buff um i mean it's currently like if it is just limp and huffing it is the same thing but the difference is that you're on a mount versus not on a mount then this is actually should be a slowdown movement 
debuff, but I don't, I don't remember. So we'll see. Uh, the invulnerability status given at each Grand Company base will now prevent all status and knockback effects while active, which is helpful for when you're being uh, spawn trapped. So you're just permanently invulnerable. And while you're invulnerable, you can't be status debuffed or knocked back for anything until it goes away, which is cool. Um, the quantity of data required to win a campaign in Seal Rock Seas has been reduced from eight to 700. Uh, they also changed the Fields of Glory Shatter map from 16 to 22,000. They also made the map a lot smaller, as we saw in the actual live lighter. Um, they, they basically just changed this game mode entirely. So that's going to be very fascinating to see. The game should be a lot faster. It should also end a lot faster. And there should be less likelihoods of people being pushed off of the ledges um, for the top. But also um, the variance of being able to win or lose it's a little bit unfair for some people based on rng rng really you can lose really easily in shatter because of rng they fix that with the rework for the mapping and it should be a lot better which is cool um for dungeon Nottam, that is the newest pvp map the amount of points needed to win decreased to 14 from 16 game should be faster in order to rework the duty for frontline pvp adjustments they took out secure and this is probably because they're going to be uh changing most likely the map for this one as well. So secure is the map when you basically go up the ramps and you go to the top and you try and take out the little things then you like leave and then there's a big node. And that's what that map is. So they're probably gonna rework that map as well and probably make it instead of being going up, you're going down. So we'll see. Yeah. So they changed the highlights for the map so you can see where you are, which is cool. Battle high gauge, this the HUD change, which is also really cool. Um, Frontline will now get uh, PvP Series XP, which is awesome. So doing Frontline will actually be really good for you getting the Series Pass through, which is cool. We have new items. This is all the raid gear. Looks fire. This is all of the weapon design contest stuff. Also really cool. So weapons are pretty sweet, actually. These are applied for all the classes. Um, personal favorites for me, I think. I loved Gunbreakers. I loved White Mages. Um... I loved Dragoon and Ninjas. Bard, Machine Ninja. I loved Office Range. And I think I loved Black Mages. I mean, not to say that everyone didn't do a phenomenal job. You guys all killed it with the design contest. Red Mages one looks was, looks insane. I just got to see it with my, you know, I got to see it in the moment and, and have the weapon in my hands to really get like a good grasp at it. New recipes are added. Um, all this gear looks amazing. I already am sold on it. So I can't wait to have that be applied. So that's really cool. Uh, the equipment... Oh, just has been made to the graphics of the following equipment. So for all of the gloves, I think now the gloves, so essentially the gloves have like a little um, netting around the wrist and it kind of puffs out. I think now the puff out will always be above like your body piece if it has like a, like a, like a tighter hold. So like if, if I have like my shirt like this now, instead of it being above the glove, I think the glove goes above the shirt. I think that's what that does. Um, so we'll see. Now the... The Valentinion uh, Emissary Clothing, this was the most recent Valentine's event, can be equipped never regardless of gender. Uh, there was an announcement uh, made for this where you can essentially acquire both sets, regardless of the class or race that you played. Uh, you should have gotten both sets for this because I kind of first saw this company. Uh, I made sure I got both sets. So yeah. The uh, adjustment, uh, the adjustments have been made to the glamour system, so they can pick between places, which is awesome. I love that they added the armor as an option. Uh, that's phenomenal. The radiance gear can be purchased for for nuts at the guild support vendors, which is cool. It is uh, technically like the first or second set, if you will, so that makes sense. New items available in exchange for achievement certificates have been added. That's cool. So that'd be good fun to go check out. Um, you can usually go check that out ver near the, um, I know the one in Gridania. It's basically where you do the summoner quest line. I don't know where the other ones are though, but I, I'll go check that out for sure later on. Uh, certain items can now be desynthesized. Pro Island prisms yielded from crafting is now, uh, you get three instead of one, which is nice. F new conditions for expert recipes now guarantees a good material uh, for the next step called Good Omen. That's cool. Uh, synthesizing an item in the crafting log, those recipes will automatically adjust upon redisplays of the items before and after the crafted item are visible. That's awesome. That's going to make it a lot easier to not have like menus going in and out, basically. So that'd be cool. New, uh, new gathering points, new items, new attempts, new aquarium breeding. That's fun. 
Uh, new fishing spots. New place for doing ocean fishing. That's going to be cool. We're going to do Kagane area. Love that. That means that there's probably going to be a new mount of with it as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, new mounts in general. Chances are this might be the one for Kugane, I'm assuming, but we'll we'll see. Because it is a Stormblood base mount, so chances are pretty high that's the case. New Chuck Bombarding, that's uh, that's cool, Bez. Looking amazing. Shout out to Ruby Open, getting their own minion. That's cool. Also, um, not it's not in the patch notes, but essentially the next trial, I believe it's Emerald Weapon. Actually, no, it might be Sea of Sacrifice. The next trial down the list from Ruby Weapon is going to have a glow effect. So it's either Emerald or it is... I think it's actually uh, Warrior of Light, which is Sea of Sacrifice. I think that's the next one. So go check the marker board. Those weapons are probably going to cost you millions of gil. So have fun. Uh, new Umbrella. Awesome. The following additions have adjustments have been made to the character creation. Uh, the expansion card required in... Wait, I just like... The expansion pack required to select certain races will be displayed if you get to register a license for that expansion. Cool. So basically, if you want to play a certain race, you need the expansion pack or the uh, expansion just required to actually have it. So for example, if you want to be a Rothgar, you need to have the correct expansion. I believe that is technically uh, Shadowbringers. For Aura, I believe it's Heaven's Word for Aura? Maybe? I don't remember. Uh, or it could have been error. I actually don't know that. That's a fun, uh, fun trick that I'm really not to go check out. Also, when, when adjusting character sliders, a marker will display the sliders previous selected value, which is cool. RBG values are not displayed when selecting certain, certain features, including uh, color for skin, hair, and eyes, which is cool. Um, message will display now when saving characters' appearance data. The when you're selecting the date of birth, patron deity, and other things, it'll have no effect and it'll give you an information bubble on that, which is really cool. I think a lot of people think that they might have an effect on it and you find out that it doesn't. So, you know, to clean that up, it just makes it a lot easier to actually know that. So they added achievements for the tanking stuff, doing the normal raids and savage raids, as well as the new extreme and unreal, which is cool. They also applied this to all of the same content, which is cool. Um, in order to prevent server congestion, there's going to be multiple field instances for Reset Han, Garlemald, and Elpis. So chances are we're going to be able to get some extra hunts out of that, as well as just kind of cleaning up the placement for everything, which is cool. There is now a option to display prices with a fee for doing the market board, which I like that actually. So instead of having to see the tax after the fact, you can just see the pricing of it right then and there when you're in the process of actually buying stuff with the market board, which is cool. This is actually like a really big change and I actually like this a lot. So when you're doing retainer stuff, instead of having two windows to select where you want to go to for leveling and, and seeing the items, it's all under one window. That's a huge W. So I love that. Um, for gear sets, they cannot be used at the beginning of the game. There's a total of 100 applied, which is a lot more than I usually have. So I think that same rule applies to a lot of people. Um, but it'll definitely make it a lot easier for doing like other content stuff. So like ultimates and, on you know, um, criterion dungeons, etc., whatever have you. So that's cool. Um, when registering a gear set to a hot bar, the gear sets item level will now be displayed on the tooltip. That's really cool. And then a guide on using gear sets has been added to the gear set list so that you'll get to see like a little know-how. So that means that when, you know, when you, if you make a new character or you're like a new character playing the game, uh, the guide telling you about gear set stuff is going to be added so that you're not going to sit there with a hundred slots and you don't know what it is. So that's really cool that they thought about that uh, with new players in the moment. So that's fun. And this is also a really cool thing too. When you're acquiring a new job going from Gladiator to Paladin with Soul Crystal, uh, you can now choose whether or not to transfer the hop or actions for that class. So usually it'll give you the default if you choose to not do that option. But if you do transfer it, then it'll just copy and paste your current bar onto the new one. And of course, all the you know paladin stuff may not appear or it might be randomized but it will at least copy your gladiator hot bar which is fun new stickers new duties that you can record have been changed new portrait accents for adventure plates uh they've made new adjustments to portraits there's new accents new poses they now can be displayed at the start of hunts or for um for maps and for seasonal events which means that we're probably going to get an event soon that's going to basically give you uh show off the the plate which seems fun um if the character's current gear appearance doesn't match the last save gear for the portrait then a message will be displayed indicating that it doesn't match which is cool because usually the yield symbol gave you that indication but now they'll actually tell you where your pieces are not basically synced up so that you why well, the portrait won't display i actually like that they tell you where it is versus just the idea in general um so i like that a lot 
For commendations, the portraits are now enabled for player commendations will now also display after matches of crystalline conflict, which is cool. And you can also do it by just double clicking the person or pressing OK twice. And the position of the setting button has been adjusted in the player accommodation window. Cool. Uh, big one. I think this is a, a big fan favorite for a lot of people. But basically now, the players can now showcase the job icon for when they're doing content. So if you're doing a raid, it'll actually showcase you the icon of the person who's talking, which is really cool. Um, the same thing also applies for like looking materia party, recruiting party members for the party finder, raid uh, party leader, party member, playing triple triad, or also in a duty, which is cool. Um, override the, the chair from uh, being AFK will basically change that so that makes sense. Um, also, the font color cannot be applied based on the role, which is really cool. And also, the ability to hide or show the traveler title in Institute has also been added. So, if you're in a Dynamis server and you go to an Ether server and you queue in for a raid in Ether, then you can actually toggle on or off if you want to show the traveler title or not, which is cool. Uh, nice to have, honestly. So out of battle options been added for display name, small and smallest options have been added for display name size. That's cool. Online statuses and travel titles will only be displayed during instance battles in which players control NPCs. That's really nice. It's gonna just clean up how it visually looks um, because it's like how is thank grid a you know a random traveler. So I like that. There's a window here that kind of showcases all this fun stuff too, which is really, really cool. So this is you be this will definitely be really fun to look at uh, and kind of mess around with. So I'm excited to take a look at that basically. Um, when joining a recruiting party, the following categories will not be displayed in the chat log. You got objective, comment, and duty finder settings, which is really cool. There's also an option to allow the party list. The bottom of the screen has been added, which is, I'm not too sure why they added that though. That's kind of fascinating, but I'm, uh, I'm for it. That's cool. The positioning and size of the alliance list has been adjusted. So now it goes to 80%. They added targets six, seven, and eight for signs, which is cool. I know they did. Uh, one through five for a while, and it kind of didn't make sense, but they added eight. You know, now there's just one for each person in a raid. That's cool. Uh, ready check is completed. There's actually a sound that will confirm it, which is awesome. There's also an option to basically have new items. Basically, instead of being added to the the next available spot, it goes to the bottom, so it makes it a little bit easier, kind of to clean up what you get new. Uh, if you have less stuff in your inventory, usually, um, how about replacement enable or disable option has been added which is really cool. So that basically means that you get to re replace it with a different hotbar setting, like a pet, or if you're like on a mount, that kind of thing, you can turn that on or off, which is cool. Um, the layout of repa request repair window has been adjusted. That's cool. New icons for the macros. That's actually fun. I can't wait to go check that out. Um, PlayStation Plus members can now register an additional e as a free destination. Where's the PC love that though, you know? I mean, that's cool though. So I love that. Um, same thing with the friends list. If there's a picture and icon that's split above both players, it'll kind of give you the indication like, hey, we're both on PS4 and PS5. That's cool. Uh, same thing applies for people who are basically playing the game in general that they've also met. Okay, that's cool. Uh, following option been added to the character configuration setting. There's a general tab. You can now, yeah, the new thing being in the last slot in the inventory. Um, display name stuff, hop bar stuff, login window stuff. That's cool. Text commands, new emote stuff. Uh, they added sub commands for the attack text to eight. You can do Eos and Selene as a pet glamour for Eggy Glamour command, which is cool. Uh, although we still miss Selene. Data since the travel system adjustments have been made. Additional hub messages are now displayed when the player chooses to visit another data center. And the sound effect and gamepad vibration will now be used to indicate a character has successfully moved to another place, which is cool. I think that it kind of already exists, although it's subtle, so I guess they made it more clear. So that's cool. Uh, new things for the, uh, the dictionary, new trophies for PS5. And stuff with Mac version. Okay. And then here are all of the resolved issues. Let's see if we can kind of like quickly see what there might be. Uh, Paladin, mm, Dunscape, Typical Orthos. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, PvP, Southern Cross, treated as a spell and could receive the effects of magnification. And, all right, they fixed it. I used it. So okay. I mean, I didn't, I, I tested it. I didn't like deliberately use it, but I, I found that it worked. Uh, clearly, it's not supposed to work. Uh, on Sanctuary, Fishing Log, Crit for, oh, Alexandrian Metal Blade, okay, sure, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, Light up your characters in this for areas, this thing pop, pop it are only PS5. Um, iOS issue for Mac, 
and then there's a bunch of other issues and there you have it so obviously we've got only like a couple of more hours left until the release comes out for this it's going to be so exciting i can't wait honestly i just can't wait to get my hands on literally the new trial the new story mode and the new raid and just take a look at all these changes that they're going to be implementing it's going to be so exciting and i can't wait uh, I mean, I think the whole entire patch is a W in terms of everything that it's got going on. So that's awesome. Um, so from this point forward, we just got to be patient and wait. And I will see all of you guys in the new 6.4 patch for 14. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and have fun.